on April 3rd, 2013, President Obama announced from the White House a new grand challenge in science and technology, which was the BRAIN Initiative. And ever since then, uh, the NIH, the uh, DARPA Defense Advanced Research Projects Administration, and the NSF have been planning research programs to develop innovative neurotechnology. Now, the United States is not alone in developing a brain program. In fact, the Europeans came out of the blocks first with the Human Brain Project. Japan now has a major project doing transgenic primates, the marmoset, and we expect China to announce a major program soon. We realized that we needed to have a conference or a gathering in order to be able to assess where we are, where all of the countries are going and try to integrate all of the programs scientifically. Now, I know it's very difficult for nations to do that, but it's something that scientists can do, and it's something that Keystone is particularly good at. And so with Stan Grillner, we have developed the State of the Brain 2016, which will uh, bring together international researchers to be able to uh, assess where we are and where we're going over the next 10 years. We expect uh, many uh, neuroscientists to be interested, but I think that, in fact, it's much broader. I think that's going to attract engineers. For example, the human, uh, the brain initiative, which uh, the United States is, is funding, is really trying to bring engineers together with neuroscientists, develop new tools and techniques for recording from neurons, for developing uh, the, the wiring diagram, and to understand how that gives rise to behavior. So we, we expect to have a really strong interest from those people who are developing new tools. Uh, we expect psychologists who are interested in understanding behavior, neurothologists. In fact, every area of science is going to be needed in order to be able to crack a problem as difficult as how the brain works. In 2016, we are expecting that there will have been an enormous amount of progress that's made locally. But you know, journals are very slow. It takes a lot of, lot of time to get things uh, accepted and published. So what we ex hope will happen is that this will be a way to uh, bring together the best researchers, exchanging scientific information that will allow us to uh, be able to help each other. You know, if, if you're doing a project in isolation, which is the traditional way of doing things, uh, you know, it, it takes years to make progress. But we can't afford that. We want to accelerate that so that we can really help each other uh, to boost the, the rate at which we can make discoveries so that instead of taking 100 years, we can compress that into 10 years. So that's our hope, is that we'll attract the best and the brightest. And we're not just expecting the senior investigators. We're expecting students and postdocs. And, and, and I, I get email every day from excited young students who want to get into uh, neuroscience because they see it, that, that, that this is where progress is being made. So I think this meeting will be a, a really a, a focal point for all of that energy that's been building up over the last couple of years. Well, you know, there are many meetings, uh, big and small, but I think that what they lack is a focus. Neuroscience is a, a very broad field, but what we're talking about is neural circuits. This is the part of the levels of, uh, of, of investigation ranging from the molecular all the way up to the entire central nervous system th that we know least about. What happens when you have 10,000 neurons or 100,000 in a cortical column tightly interacting with each other? We could, if, you know, if you look at one neuron, that's only a very small little part of the orchestra. It's one instrument. What's the, what kind of music are they making together? You need to record from a larger number. So if we can record from a significant fraction of the neurons in a cortical column and how they interact with each other, we'll understand some basic principles of cortical function. And that's what we're hoping will happen, is that these new techniques will allow us to understand principles of, of brain function. Meetings are interesting uh, events. It's where people come together, and there's a lot of intensity. And in my experience, the best place to have a meeting is a place like Keystone, which is a little isolated, beautiful environment. And Outback, I, I think, will satisfy those requirements. But I think that there's something more important, the energy. The energy comes from uh, the expectations 
the people coming who are going to give presentations is, are part of that because they're presenting you know, work that's been done. But even more exciting is what's going on outside of the main sessions, which is all the networking that's going on between people. And there will be people from the entire planet. You know, these, these are international uh, efforts that are taking place in many different countries. And these will be taking place at bars. And these will be taking place you know, uh, outside of the main uh, uh, events. And that's, that's where plans are made for the next year, where people uh, come up with new ideas and uh, come away with it with a lot of energy, go back to their lab, and that's what influences the future. And that's why I think that this particular meeting is going to be so important.